nearing the completion of his last words, the last words of Christ when he was on the cross. Are you comfortable? John chapter 1. The thing that I'm going to tell you that you dread, that everyone here dreads, whatever your age is, is an unfinished life. Is to get near life, near the end, and it start to be unfinished. And we all know what it's like. All of us have unfinished things cluttering up the highway of life, the half mowed lawn, the half read book, the letter started but never sent, the abandoned diet, the degree we never finished, the phone calls never returned. But it'd be much more serious than that. I've known of abandoned children, the job we quit in the fit of anger, the bills never paid, the promises never kept. All of us go through life leaving behind a trail of unfinished projects and unfulfilled dreams. How few there are who can come to the end of life and say, I finished exactly what I set out to do. Jesus was, I believe, the only person in all of history that was able to say, without a shadow of a doubt, that he had finished everything that he came to do. As a matter of fact, all through Scripture, when Jesus shows up, he said, God sent me here to this earth. God sent me here for a purpose. God sent me through Mary's womb. God gave me an opportunity to have ministry here. And over all of that, I have finished that which I have called. And that's what the cross was about. In John chapter 1, verse 1, tells us of his beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Throughout him, nothing was made. What that has been made. Again, the, the age-old question is, is God, is it just God in heaven? Is there three in heaven, two in heaven? I, I, don't, I just know there are angels in heaven. It's a glorious mix-up. But I know this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. This book here was alive then. It was alive when he walked. It's still alive today. Can I get an amen? In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Again, we see this over and over where Christ comes into certain areas and the darkness just doesn't seem to catch it and it's our place in life our ministries our jobs to try to help people understand this light this thing that took hold of our life if you skip down to verse 10 it says he was in the world and though the world was made through him the world did not recognize him he came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him yet to all who received him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become the children of God I'm so glad to be standing before children of God today I ask God to bless you strengthen you give you wisdom open our ears to hear Lord what the spirit of the Lord would say to the church in Jesus name everybody shout amen. shout a little louder amen. thank you amen God bless you I, 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 when I'm reading this, I realize the word, the voice became flesh. The word, uh, uh, word there is the word logo, logos. Uh, a logo expresses the intent, the purpose, the plan of the organization. If I flip this iPad out here, you'd see a, one of our logos right there. It, 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 it entails, it says, you know, that we're a church that is striving to be holy and wild. We don't, we don't have a problem particularly with the wild part. Yeah, I know y'all, they man me on that one. Uh, but the other part's where we need to be working a little bit more on. Amen. But the logo expresses the intent, the purpose, the plan of the organization. God said, this time, you wouldn't only hear the word of God, but you're going to see the word manifest. And that's what Jesus was when he walked on the earth. He was the word manifest. Now, I think in the Old Testament, you see the word salvation, rescued, uh, used over and over. But it was an unfulfilled. It was something that needed, it was lacking. It needed a little more punch to it for, in other words, all the sins of the old were being rolled forward. One of the most repeated phrases, again, is he that has an ear, that God help our ear. Do you know your ears actually shape the way your heart is? Your heart ain't like this. I don't care what Hallmark says. It ain't like this. Your heart's actually shaped like your ear. So when it says that he, when your spirit, you're hearing this way. You're catching what is being said. Jesus reinstates the voice of God back to man. When your voice is your vehicle of your When I hear your voice, everybody's voice in here is different. Isn't it amazing? Seven billion people in the world, and everybody has a different voice. If you called me on the phone, I could probably pick out, if I've known you a little while, whose voice that was. You'd know my voice. And when Christ walked on earth, his voice meant something. It, it, it walked, it was the vehicle of his spirit. And when he would speak, it would speak out. When I hear you talk, I know what's going on inside your spirit. I know what's happening to you. So when Jesus showed up, you have to listen for the voice. In the boat, he speaks to the wind and the waves. Be still, and the wind and the waves will be still. The creation did whatever the world. Word wanted when the word the word created 
In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God. The Word created the world, and because of that, when he spoke to the world, the world did what he said. So when he said to the molecules of the water, be still, well, to the wind, be still, it got still. It got quiet. As a matter of fact, when he said to Peter to come, Peter got out, walked on the very water he was walking on, to Lazarus in a loud voice, he says, Lazarus! Come forth. Somebody said the reason why he just didn't yell come forth, everybody in the grave would have got up if they didn't know what name it was. So Lazarus signified who it was that was dead. His voice meant something. It is more of a miracle for something not to happen when Jesus spoke than for it to happen. Because when he said light be, light was. When he said wind be still, it was still. When he said tree die, it died. It's on the hill of all of this that Jesus spins uh, and says to his disciples, I say to you, if you have faith in God, in other words, if you get on my frequency, if you learn what I'm doing here, you can do the same thing. His last words on the cross, and we know that he was pinned from 3 o'clock, excuse me, from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. For 15 hours, 12, 15 hours, he'd gone through some of the most uh, abusive time any man that I know of. Blood had left his body. There on the cross, right off the, uh, right off the bat, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Then he had the conversion when he tells the thief, I tell you the truth today, you'll be with me in paradise. The commission, woman, behold your, your, your son, son, behold your mother, turning his mom over. Uh, the cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When the sins, the cesspools of the world were poured upon him, all the darkness began to come across the sky. And at that moment, he felt like he had been forsaken. And listen, what it was, it was God turning his back on sin, not really his son. Then the, the conquering, last week we talked about in John chapter 19, verse 30, or excuse me, verse 28, later knowing that all things are now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they, they soaked a sponge in it, but put the sponge on a stalk on the hyssop plant and lifted it up to his lips. What's the big principle about last week? You could taste bitterness, but don't swallow don't digest it. Don't worry. Everybody here is going to be hurt. Everybody's going to go through anger. Everybody's going to have opportunities to be bitter if you're not careful. And when he lifted this bitterness, this vinegar up to his mouth, he tasted it, but he didn't digest it. He didn't ingest it inside of him. This is what's important in life. You're going to go through times that you're going to get hurt. And when you do, listen to me again, don't curse it. Don't curse. All right, son of a, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't let it come out of your mouth. You can think it. It's okay. Why do you think you can think something before you say it? Because God's given you permission to think that thing without spewing that thing. So you can think it. Don't say it. And then just kind of smile to yourself that you could have. Don't curse it. Don't nurse it. Don't put a bottle in the mouth of the offense. Don't nurse that thing and grow. Because whatever you nurse is going to grow. If you keep nursing it and nursing it and nursing it, it's going to get big. And a little bitty thing, a little slight, a, a little uh, uh, hurt that you went through is going to become so large that it's going to envelop you. And all you're going to talk about the rest of your life is that hurt, is that pain. And you're going to email it. And you're going you're to send it out. You're going to text it. You're going to get somebody else to get along with you. So don't curse it. Don't nurse it. Don't rehearse it. Quit rehearsing the thing. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If 20 years ago that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be in the place I am right now. <laughs> You've rehearsed this thing long enough. We've all heard it. We've all dealing with it. So if you're thirsty, understand it, that he'll take care of you. But don't, di don't digest the bitterness. Don't rehearse it. But reverse it. How do you reverse it? You know what Jesus said? This is hard enough for us to do it for our friends, but much less our enemies. He said, bless those who curse you. Bless those who hurt you. Do something good for them. Turn this thing around. The best way I can do in life is turn things around. Well, Pastor, I wasn't wrong. I didn't ask if you were. But you are hurt. You are upset. You are bothered by it. Well, you don't know how bad that divorce was. I, I know how bad it was. We all heard about it. We all read about it. We all saw it. We all saw the, we, 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 you don't understand how the, we all saw it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so let it go. Because if you don't, then, then you, they're holding you prisoner. Amen. They're renting space in your brain, uh, rent free. Let it go. Leave that thing alone. So, so quit rehearsing it, but reverse it. Bless those that have done you wrong and disperse it. When I think of disperse, I think, I think of uh, that, that, that uh, commercial where it shows that grease in the sink and somebody drops that dawn dishwashing detergent in it and when it hits it goes you need, you need a forgiveness bomb going off in your life 
on. Blow that thing on out of the way. Just get it on out of the way. Just, just shove it way away from you. Don't let it. Well, Pastor, I don't know if I'll ever be friends. You don't have to be friends again. Just don't let it on you. Amen. That's good preaching already. Amen. So here we go. So the, the sixth thing Jesus said on the cross, Jesus said, after he wet his lips, then he had received the drink. Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. If you were novice, and I don't mean that mean, but if you were new in the word of God and you read it is finished, you may think that he was saying he was finished. He never had to say that. His physical sufferings reached the climax. The pain is now unbearable. Breathing is almost impossible. Six hours on that cross. The thieves have already died next to him. The crowd gathers around. The vultures are circling their prey. The friends of Jesus watch in horror as his life ebbs away. Death rattles in his throat from somewhere down below. A fiendish evil howling. Amen. The angels look away. The Son of God is about to die. Die. And then his last words, Tetelestai. Amen. It is finished. It's over with. It's accomplished. It comes from the verb teleo, which means to bring to an end, to complete, to accomplish. To, you know, God bless somebody that can get to the end of their life and say, it's finished. I did everything I came to do. Uh, you know, in, bottom line is all of us have regrets if you live long enough. I went home to Alabama a couple of years ago. My brother had two tattoos on his arm. My brother is tatted up. I mean, he tatted. There ain't none of y'all even getting near him yet. And he had on his own one arm, God rules. And he says the influence from, from my life. And on this side, I said, no regrets. So he throws it up there and shows me, you know, his little muscles on and stuff. <laughs> I said, that looks good, Jimmy. That's cute. <laughs> I'm careful about what I get tattooed on my body. You know, because I got to live with that. You know, you don't want Susie and then marked out and then Deborah and marked out. And, you, know, you know, you don't want none of that. Mom and pop usually last forever, though. Uh, so, so I went back this, this year. I went back to see my brother. And, and, and I'm looking at his arms. You know, and, and he didn't have to say that. He had all tribal put on his arms. He had covered up every one of them, no regrets. He said, brother, I learned real quick that that ain't the truth in my life right now. I have had a few regrets. If you live long enough, you're going to have just a few of them. Amen. At this moment, though, it's different from the past. The, the t past tense, which looks back to an event and says this happened. The perfect tense asks the idea that this happened and it is still in effect today. When Jesus cried out, it is finished. He meant it is finished in the past. It's still finished in the present. And it's going to be finished when your children and your children's children and your great, great, great grandchildren. Amen. It's always going to be finished. It ain't never going to be a time when it ain't finished. And no one other fact. He did not say. I am finished, so that would imply that he was defeated when he died, he was exhausted. Rather, he cried out, It's finished, meaning I successfully completed the work the Father sent me here to do. To tell us, die. Then is the Savior's final cry of victory. When he died, he left no unfinished business behind. When he said it's finished, he was speaking the truth, the word of redemption. The very reason why he came is now complete. It's undoubtedly the major meaning. The death of Christ provided a full satisfaction for sin. God said, That is good. The Final blow to Satan. The fountain of grace open that will flow forever. Foundation of peace laid that will last forever. It's finished to tell us that. Could be interpreted paid in full. There's nothing like being debt free. Oh, Jesus love me. When you debt free, when things are paid in full, and I, I mean, many times our lives are so incomplete and we go through life and go, God, I, how could you love me? How could you care for me? Look back to the cross. Look back what he did. When he said it's finished and you accepted that, my friend, it took care of your salvation. It's paid in full. It means that once a thing is paid for, it is foolish to try to pay for it again. Excuse me, I just bought this motorcycle. But what I'd really like to do is I like it so much, I want to pay for it again. You know, I paid 20 grand for this bike. I really love this bike. The more I ride it, the more I want to pay. Can, I get, can we make up payments again? I know I paid it off. I know I got the title, but I'd like to pay it off again. I'd like to send you another 500 a month for the next four years to pay this thing off. And if I really like it at the end of four, I might just do it again. That's how many of us are reacting to the salvation that God has given us. We keep trying to pay for it. We keep trying to do good works thinking somehow that means something. Amen. We do what we do because we are saved not to be saved. 
Amen. It is finished. We believe that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless born again. And that to no degree, no degree uh, uh, of reformation, however great, no attainments in morality, however high. I don't care if you sister this and brother that. No culture, however attractive. No baptism can help me as a sinner even take one step toward heaven. But a new nature imparted from above. Being born again. Amen. By the Spirit of God. A new life implanted by the Holy Spirit through the Word is essential to salvation. And only those thus saved are the children of God. It is finished. We believe that our redemption has been accomplished solely by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is made to be sin and was made a curse for us, dying in our place instead, and no feeling. I don't feel saved. I don't care. I don't take away from his blood. Uh, uh, no feeling, no good resolutions. Well, I'll get it right January 1. <laughs> No, no sincere efforts, no submission to the rules and regulations of any church. For all the churches that have existed since the days of the apostles can add in the very least degree to the value of the blood or the merit of the, of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I have proclaimed for years, it's the blood plus nothing that saves us. It's what happened on the cross that set us free. It changes everything in our life. Does it mean when we get to act any way we want? God forbid. Amen. We don't trample on the blood. We thank God for the blood. His last words were a voice of victory. It wasn't anything. As a matter of fact, when I think about it, when he said, it is finished, it was loud enough for those around him to hear him and for things to start taking place. Many of you have known I've talked about inside the temple, they were sacrificing lambs in order to wipe away the sins of the people, thinking they're doing an Old Testament thing, and it's amazing how many keep falling back into the law churches that fall back into the law I know there's a move in Mexico now where a lot of churches have fallen back into the law amen it's all about law it's all about how we dress how we look and, and the rituals we do there inside there you're talking about law they were cutting the throats of the lambs. They were bleeding them out. They were sacrificing them back on the other side of the, of the great curtain was the holy of holies he had the holy place, the holy of holies and the priest would go back there and I, I don't know exactly what he said but he offered up the sins of the people and covered by the blood of that lamb. At the very same time, Christ was dying on the cross. And the scripture says when he said, it is finished, Matthew 27, 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from, and you got to catch it, top to bottom. Amen. This curtain was not like this curtain here. This curtain here was thick as the span of a man's hand. It was like a wall of cloth. It took over 300 priests to hang this heavy garment up, and yet God split that thing from top to bottom. Amen. All the way down. And this also says at the very same time, the earth shook and the rock split. The tombs broke open, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They were out of the tombs. And after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. They went the centurion. The soldier and those, those with him who were guarding Jesus saw that the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and explained, surely he was the son of God. The rocks were rent. Saints were waiting for redemption. See, I, I don't know. I don't, how does, why don't you let me in on it, Jesus? I want to know. I want to know who these people were. Was it Fred and Frida and Susie? Uh, who who had died? What was it? Was it Lazarus? Uh, no, no, he was still alive. Who who was dead? Was it was it Mary, your mother's uncle? Was it Joseph? Joseph? He's not in the scene anymore. Could he? I don't know. Who was? He won't let me in. I got to get to heaven to get the answers to these, because I don't have the answers. But something so powerful that his blood hitting the ground. The earth shook, the curtain rent. It wasn't to let people in. It was to let God out to hang out with his people. That's all God. God didn't want to be boxed up. Now he wants to be with his people. Redemption had taken place. All these things. And people were up from the grave. Oh, we, we have fascinations about stuff like that. That hand coming up through the ground. The walking dead. I know in your mind you're thinking when it came out, they were like, 
I don't think so. I think they came out and went, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> hey, guys. Dude, I'm going to tell you, where I have been, it's been a, it's been a hoot. But getting back here, they, I, don't know, I don't know if they, what they talked about. I don't know the testimonies. All I know is they got up, and it was a sign of something to come. It was the tithe, if you would, of the redemption of mankind. That one day, everybody's going to come up from the grave. You're not going to see bones sticking out. Amen. We'll come back. The Bible says we'll be known as we're known. It's going to be an amazing thing. But the bottom line is when he said it's finished, it was paid in full. It was not the sigh of a victim, but the shout of a victor. When Jesus said it's finished, it was finished then, now and forever by the glory of God. After a million times, a million years have passed, it's still going to be finished. The mission of redemption, I close with this. The mission, mission of redemption was complete. The whole gospel is wrapped up in these three words. English words, one Greek word, to tell us that. Amen. Every priest goes to work at the altar each day, offers the same old sacrifices year in, year out, and never makes a dent in the sin problem. As a priest, Christ made a single sacrifice. In other words, you've sacrificed thousands or millions of lambs to try to take care of this one sacrifice. But this one sacrifice, and that was it. And he sat down at the right hand beside God and waited for his enemies to cave in. It was a perfect sacrifice by a perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. If you, if you take notes, you want to get that word in the message. It was perfect sacrifice by a perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. How many know we are the misfits? Amen. By that single offering, he did everything that was needed to be done for everyone who takes part in the purifying process. It's what he did. Would you stand with me? It may look like at times your last hour that there's no hope. You watch the news, you know, even in our community in the last week, there's been tragedies that have been connected to people in our church. I, I see it. I, my heart, I was talking to my pastor who lives up in the St. Louis area. It goes out to those flood victims right now in the Midwest. I'm seeing it, and it's like, I know what they're going to be going through. I know the, the stench and the, 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 the soot and all the, the mud and the things and how it destroys stuff. I see it. I'm sending, not condolences, I'm trying to connect to find again, how can we help, what can we do? It looks like the last hour. No hope, the sun has stopped shining. But with one sentence from his lips, he can tear through the curtain that has divided you from him. The greatness of the gospel is that we serve a God who left his throne, wrapped himself in flesh, walked among us, loved us, forgave us, taught us with his voice, showed us with his actions what real love is. So much so that when John wrote his books, he said, you know that you're brothers because you love one another. That love is supernatural. Be honest. I come from a family that was so full of hate and venom and meanness. And when God came into my, that's how I knew I'd been born again. I started loving unlovables. I started forgiving people who had hurt my family. You know, it wasn't so much you hurt me. You hurt my mama. You hurt my dad. You affected my family. That love began to change. That's what changes you. Now, after over 30 years, of, almost 40 years now serving God. Oh, now 40 years of serving God. I can tell you. It's the love of Christ that's been shed abroad in our hearts that changes us. David, you said something when you were up here. You mentioned to the band, but it's good for everybody. That God, give, a, give us our first love back. He said, one thing that you lost is your, 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 your first love. And, and they said, well, how do we get our first love back? Revelation says, go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. Rocky, remember when I used to wear these at Channel View Christian Center? I wear a double-breasted suit and a tie, and I had a, a curlies running down the back. You know, I do. Yeah, curlies. Yeah, I did. I had a mullet with curls. Business in the front, party in the back. 
You go back to your first love. What did you do? What did you do in the beginning? Let me tell you what I did. I soaked this book up. I read this thing like a love letter. I read Psalms. I read Proverbs and the principles and the statues. I stayed out of Leviticus. Because it said don't eat shrimp. I'm a Gentile. Peter, God told Peter, eat, eat, kill and eat. Eat that pig. Have that bacon. Thank you, Jesus. I was hunting for loopholes. I was in this book, man. I was praying all the time, talking to him. It wasn't religious prayer. It was just talking to him. I'm mad at this and upset with that one. How did I get through this? Give me wisdom. It's amazing. He said, if you want wisdom, ask for it. There are those of you who think you've got to go to college to get wisdom. No, you get educated when you get wisdom. You can still graduate stupid. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. So I got wisdom, prayer, and then I witnessed. I told people what he had done for me. Oh, I had to tell them. When, when, when there are times Jesus would heal somebody and he'd say, I love this. Don't tell nobody. Raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. Don't tell nobody. How you going to keep somebody who was dead, who's now resurrected, mouth shut, particularly when they were teenagers? They going to tell somebody. Somebody got to hear this. Somebody got to know. Get your first love back. I got to get my first. We all got to keep our first love. You got to keep it stoked. Got to keep the fire going. Amen. I I met with the band this week and I told them, you know, 16 years we've been doing this. 16 years, my voice, your voice. They've heard you guys. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. We got to keep the fire. Amen. We got to get it back. Midweek, I told you, the wall's halfway built. We we got more building to go. We got more things to do. I finished with three words. It is finished. Not I am. It is is finished heads bowed eyes closed it's a joy for me to know this one thing that i do not know everybody in this room i don't know everybody that's watching on the internet i don't know so i have to ask i'm compelled to ask i I must ask you this question if you're not right with god and you know it it's that simple put your hand up right now that i can pray for you where you stand Thank you, sir. Who else? Thank you, sir. Amen. I don't know everybody here. In fact, you just put your hand up and back down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Together, can we pray? Lord Jesus, when you said it was finished, you were talking about me. You applied your blood to my sin. It is no more. Forgive me. Wash over me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I will rejoice. I'll live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is Good preaching always says, I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you, then tell you, then tell you what I told you. Did y'all catch that? All right. I'm going to tell you, then I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to, yeah. Listen, good preaching. Not great. I can only do good because great is somebody that blows in, blows up, and blows out. I live with you. The issue is simple. Don't nurse it. Don't curse it. Don't rehearse it. But reverse it and disperse it. Deal with the fences. I thirst. It's finished. Reminds me to keep my life right with him. Amen. To remind myself it's the blood plus nothing. There's nothing else. When I meet people that try to add to the, the completed work of salvation, I say, you're crazy. Are you telling me it wasn't enough? That what he did was not I can't even listen to you. Amen. 
it is finished. And we stand on the promise. It's not my feelings. It's my faith. It tells me I stand on the promise of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. Amen. And I am saved. I am was saved, saved, and I'm being saved. Amen. When he says finished, it's going to take care of tomorrow also. He's got you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Give God one more praise before you sit down, would you? Amen. As our servant leaders come up, and David prepares to make a few announcements. Mm. Next week, Pastor Kenneth Buckshot Smith will be with you. You know how much I love Kenneth. If you don't know his story, it's an amazing story. Shot out deer hunting, almost died. Called me while, he, while the blood was running out of his body. Told me he's stuck in the woods and ain't nobody out there. He will come and get him. In, in Beauregard Parish, amazing preacher, good friend of this church. Amen. So um, uh, remember that, that Kenneth will be here next week. And one announcement is not on here. We're going to, to gather a group of people. I don't know exactly what time we're going to leave, but on the 15th, Sam, on the 15th, we're going to go over to a little Pentecostal church in Sulphur, Louisiana. David and his brothers. That means David and the Giants, the whole group. Not just David on a, on a, a, a PA system, but David Huff and his group is going to be there. We just want to go over and surprise him, walk in. Uh, we have a relationship with David, have had over 20 years. He's just a good friend of ours, great, tremendous musician, as you know. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. We'll be announcing it more as, as we get closer to that. If you need to tie the offering envelope, lift your hand. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Remember, there'll be no midweek services throughout the summer. We suspended them through the summer in order for people to be able to go and do some things that they need to do. Amen. And uh, we're asking you to fellowship, to hang out with one another, invite somebody out to eat, uh, stay close. Uh, be watching on Facebook if you don't. If I'm not your friend on Facebook, connect with me because we're going to be sharing stories. And uh, I'll be preaching off of the, I don't know, a message from the mower, scriptures from a scooter. Um, you know, I, somewhere I'll be doing something, sharing with you uh, the gospel as through the week. Amen. So those are the big announcements. And then, uh, David, also about camp. Mention to him we need, we need help for camp. God bless you. Amen. Yes, we do need help. Friday and Saturday this week coming up, uh, we have a very large group. As Pastor said earlier, um, anybody and everybody that can show up, yes, please. <laughs> no, we, we really do. We have a, a very large group coming in. Um, <clears throat> 237 is our number. We have 248 beds. That gives you an idea of just how full we're going to be. So we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty packed up. Uh, if you can make it out, and that's gonna be nine to eleven in the morning. Um, if you guys can make it out, I love you. I'm grateful for you. If you can't, I still love you. I just won't love you as much. <laughs> My wife said, <laughs> "It's true. Just be honest." Uh, June 8th, uh, the second to the fifth graders trip to the wetlands. Uh, see Miss Rhea. She's in the back. Um, okay, it says today is the last day to sign up. So see Miss Rhea. She should be in the back by the end. June 2nd, Lift Ladies Bible Study uh, today after service. And it's the first and third Sundays of the month. June 2nd, today. Today is also the clothing food ministry um, at our other campus. It will be open if you guys are needing any of that or even family members if they're needing some. June 3rd, tomorrow night um, in uh, New Caney. I don't remember which city I was in. Um, they will be having the, uh, Got Your Six. It's, it's an incredible thing for anybody that's been in the military. Um, they, they will bless you. Um, did they already give envelopes? Did he already ask? Okay, good. Thank God. I was like, oh, I'm almost done. June 4th, um, Camp Holy Wild, Ropes and Course Cafeteria. Uh, we need volunteers for Friday and Saturday. Um, that, if you guys can make it, listen, this is just an opportunity for us to get to know you at times. I, I know people better when I hang around with them for a little bit, right? Uh, you guys know my name, but you may not know me. I want to get to know you. Joseph wants to get to know you. Pastor wants to get to know you. You come out, hang out next to us, we'll get to know you. Uh, today we're believing God for? 
jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Thank you.